So it's a bit of R&D work this weekend. I'm being asked to make up a sheath for a Spartan bipod. Now I've already made up sort of like the little um, belt loops, um, just slides into, put the clip over the top. Uh, but I've been asked to make a full sheath for this, for this particular one. Now I've had a couple of ideas. One of them was to, if I can find some bits over here, that's my mould. Now I'll try and use your imagination here. This is a full piece of leather, uh, sort of this sort of length, and basically it clamps on, or I'll be stitching it onto uh, a backing. So basically it would be the full length all the way down. Um, the only problem is I'm using three mil veg tan leather and it's quite thick, so I don't know. It just makes it a little bit bulky. I could make it out of thinner leather, I suppose, so that's a possibility, but uh, that's put to one side. I have made another style. Uh, again, it's, they're not finished ones, they're just bits of leather that I've cut out that I thought I'll try and um, do something with. So this one is basically, it's an extended version of this. So this is the only little belt loop. This one, basically, it's a longer tube on it. It's riveted on as opposed to stitching. I prefer stitching when I can, but with this particular type of design, you can't really, st well, I, I haven't got the equivalent or, or the, I definitely can't stitch all the way along it. So basically, this backing piece has made a, a loop, the belt loop, and then it's still got the same press stud uh, fastening over the top of it. Just the same as it would do with the smaller loop. Uh, but the only problems with this, I find it a, a bit bulky. It's there's a bit of weight there. I mean, it's not. It's only leather, so it's not massive. But it's like I say, three mil veg tan, three and a half mil veg tan leather. Uh, it just seems a bit bulky for the job that I want it for. So I'm going on for my third option, which is coming back to making it from one piece of leather. I'm going to put a welt down the, the back. Where's that? There. So I'm going to put a welt into it to open it up. It's not essential because the welt's needed for when you put a knife blade into a sheath that the blade can run along that piece of leather without cutting, cutting the stitching. But I think I'll put one in there just to, because it's got to be quite tight round, uh, I think it'll have to be wet form just to open it up and make it a bit more oval rather than sort of like a teardrop sort of shape. Uh, stitch that all the way down the side, but I'm not going to have it run all the way to the bottom. The bottom piece is going to be it's tapered off, stitched in, and then it'll join up together at the bottom of it. Again, like I say, it's probably going to have to be wet filmed. Uh, I'm just working out where I need to put my press stud uh, on the inside. I think I've got an idea of where the centre lines need to be for bipod legs. So basically point there and point there. So that'll be where the belt loop's going to go. Uh, and the press door is going to go on this side. I know that the bipod sh should finish about there. The same as what my belt loop is go going to be, or rather the, where the uh, catch over the top is going to be. So that should all be the same sort of dimension. So if I copy that onto here, again, I'm going to put a belt loop onto the back of it. I think we're going to be about there. Fingers crossed. So I've got a little further with the sheath for the Spartan bipod. 
Uh, basically, belt loops on, the catch loops on, press studs added to it. Uh, I've stitched all these up. It's all dyed, edges of the tops burnished. So basically, the next job I'm going to do with these, I'm going to put my welt on. Uh, now, I didn't quite cut that wide enough, but when I come to trim it all down and sand the edges down, it, it doesn't make any difference. But I just need to glue that in position just there. Once that's glued into position, I'll wet form it down the center. I'll just put a bit of water down the center to dampen it off. Can fold it over so it's um, flat. Glue the edge, uh, all the edge all the way around all together. Then pierce it uh, and stitch it all up. Uh, then once I've done that, then I'll properly wet form it again. So soak it up and I'll use this as a template and I'll put that onto the inside. Once it's all stitched up and basically push, push those in and hopefully it should make the right shape for the um, bipod uh, legs to go in. So that's that needs to get sorted before one of these knives can go out. So I ain't showed you much for a while. So here we go. First one, the one that's going to be going out with this uh, Spartan bipod sheath. So this one going to Steve. So it's a Follow Stalker Scandi Grind. I've put some file work on the spine of it. Uh, it's got um, it's silver uh, mica powder added to the pine cone handle like that. Uh, yellow liners on it, and also follow book pins. So there we go. That one's going out very soon. As soon as I can get this sorted for him, and he's happy with that. Uh, a pair now that I've got done. So these I've bought some walnut um, not too long ago, but I ain't used it yet because I've been stabilising it. So I've got a well, it's like a deer tracker, but it's got the row stalker blade on it. So the deer tracker is the bit where it's got the slight kick out at the back. Just gives you a little extra grip, something for your finger to, your pinky to sit against. Um, brass liners. So in my last video, you'll have seen me gluing these up. So this is how they've turned out. So it's uh, the brass liner. Either side of it is some black G10. And then the walnut handle, and it's got brass Corby bolts holding it all together. And then to go along with that one, I've got this one here, which is one of my gillies. Don't make too many of them, but it's more of a, a little bit shorter handle, but it's got a wider blade on. Again, same. Both got the brass and black uh, G10 liners. So those are going out very shortly. Uh, to match all these ones, all of them have got a dark brown sheath. So a left-handed one for Steve. Uh, yellow stitching on it to match up with the liners and I thought I'd put yellow stitching onto these two as well to match up with the brass and one of them's got the row stalker, the row tracker has got the drop dangler handle, uh, drop dangler sheath on it. So, like I say, next job, glue this one up and then I'm going to leave it overnight and then hopefully come back to it tomorrow and I'll be able to do something to it. Right, leave that to dry, that's ready for tomorrow.